Hey there, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to do another run through some circle geometry theorems. And here what I've prepared is questions that are slightly harder than the ones I did in my previous video, which I posted about a month ago. Now, the reason for me doing a second video on circle geometry is because many of you commented on how helpful that was and how um, quickly you were able to learn the chapter in that one video. Now, for the purpose of this video is to give you a more um, challenging experience of what circle geometry could be like, because it's not always going to be as easy as those six examples were. So I'm going to do four more examples of ones that is a little bit more challenging than what we were faced with in the previous video. Now, let's revise over the theorems and statements that we'll be needing for this video, such as our straight line theorems or theorems of triangles. Okay, have a look at the picture, pause the video if you want to, um, you know, just go through each one individually. Then moving on to our theorems of circles, such as uh, the center theorems, angle at center, two times angle at circumference, etc. Again, just pause the video if you'd like to have a look at this more thoroughly. Then also we have our cyclic quad theorems. And um, moving on from that, our tangent theorems. Okay, now moving on to our first example of this video. And as you can see, it looks already very complicated. So many lines and circles flying around. Let's study the sketch and then see if we can answer the questions that follows. So first we have PQ, which is a common chord to the two circles. You have these two circles, a smaller one and bigger one, and they intersect each other at the two points P and Q, which is the common chord. Right now, M is the center of the bigger circle. Right, so any line drawn from M to the circumference of that bigger circle would be considered a radius or radii. Now, um, also, P, M, and Q is a cyclic quad to the smaller circle. Okay, just have a look at those letters um, and where they are with respect to the smaller circle. P, M, and Q are all on the circumference of that smaller circle, hence that being a cyclic quad. An angle P2 is equal to X. This is what's given to us. All right, so our first question is, find two other angles, which is also equal to X. Then question two is find angle M1 and angle R in terms of X, right? And question three is prove that PS is equal to SR. Okay, maybe you can pause the video here and give these questions a try. And when you're ready, just keep watching. Okay, now if you are ready, let's continue with the first question. Right, so find two angles that is each equal to X. Um, first off, I'll look at the radii. Right, we have MP and MQ, which are the radii of the circle, and therefore those lines are equal to each other. That forms an isosceles triangle. MPQ is an isosceles triangle with angle Q1 being equal to angle P2. Therefore, you have angle Q1 is X, and the reason for that is angles opposite equal sides. The second angle was a little harder to spot, but maybe if you pictured the cyclic quad P, M, N, Q as the cyclic quad, then angle N2, which is sort of on the outside of that cyclic quad, we call that an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. And the theorem goes that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle. So therefore N2 is equal to P2, so N2 is also X. Okay, moving on to our second question, here we had to show um, or rather determine angle M1 and angle R in terms of X. Now angle M1 is quite easy to find since we now know that P2 and Q1 is both X. We can therefore say angle M1 is equal to 180 degrees minus those two X's, minus those two angles. So 180 minus 2X, that's angle M1. Okay, and therefore angle R would be half of angle M because you have the angle at the center two times the angle at the circumference. Okay, that is another circle geometry theorem that is quite popular whenever you have a center of a circle. So look at the larger circle, angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. That makes angle R 90 minus X. So it's half of the 180 
and it's half of the 2x. I hope you get that one. Okay, last question here was for us to prove that PS is equal to SR. Okay, so just looking at the lines PS and SR, there was something I spotted here. Notice M is the center of the circle and PR is a chord, right? Now, if there's a line drawn from the center to a chord and it's perpendicular to that chord, then it would bisect the chord, meaning the two parts of that chord would be equal to each other. So PS would be equal to S odd. All I need to do is prove that angle S1 or S2 is 90 degrees. I just need to prove that perpendicular relationship. Okay, so to go about this, we first need to understand our 90 degree triangle. Right, if you have some right angle triangle and one of the angles is X, then the other angle will be 90 minus X. Okay, they are complementary angles, that's what it's called, whenever you have angles adding to 90. Remember the whole angle, the whole triangle, pardon me, should sum to 180 degrees. And if you add these angles, 90, X and 90 minus X, that should add up to 180. So if you look at triangle NRS, all right, we said that N2 is X. We also said that R is 90 minus X. So could you guess what should angle S2 be? Angle S2 would therefore be 90 degrees. Interior angles of a triangle must sum to 180, which then in turn makes MS perpendicular to PR, and therefore it bisects the chord such that PS is equal to SR. Line from center, perpendicular to chord, bisects the chord. Okay, so we can already see that even though this question seemed a little intimidating at first, it was quite easy to do, as long as you knew your basic fundamental theorems of circle geometry. Okay, moving on to our second question. Here we have a circle passing through A, B and C. Also, M is the center of the circle. Notice that point M is not uh, on line AB. Point M is just a little above that. So AB is not a diameter. That's very important. AB is not a diameter. Um, but we have AC equal to BC. That is given to us. AC equal to BC. So there's your isosceles triangle. Then also PQ is parallel to CA. You have these parallel lines. Uh, so you can apply the fun principles, corresponding angles, co-interior, alternate. Okay, that's going to be useful here. Also, PA is a tangent, right? So now you should be thinking of tan chord theorem. Here the two questions are find four angles, each equal to X. So similar to the first question. And then also prove that ABPR is a cyclic quad. Okay, you may pause the video now if you'd like to try this on your own. And again, just press play to keep watching. Okay, I hope you managed to find these angles because they were actually quite nice and easy to find. Um, it was like treasure hunting, right? They give you an angle that's equal to X. In this case, angle Q was equal to X. And we had to find four other angles also equal to X. So I started by saying angle A1 is equal to X. And my reason for that was corresponding angles. So this is using something that was taught to us in grade 9 where you have this F-like formation and those angles are equal. Okay, then angle B is also X. I said angle B is equal to X because we have an isosceles triangle where ABC is an isosceles triangle, AC is equal to BC. Okay, equal chords opposite or equal angles opposite equal chords rather. Okay, then my third angle was angle A2. Okay, I said it was A2 because we have the tangent chord theorem with angle A2 being the angle between the tangent and the chord and angle B is the angle that is subtended by that chord. So notice from A and C going all the way to angle B. Right, then uh, Alternate angles. Angle P is also X. AC is parallel to QP. Alternate angles. That was the fourth one. Right, so we found all four. Now we need to prove AB, PR 
is a cyclic quad. So let's just highlight uh, those letters A, B, P, R. Um, to prove a cyclic quad, you either need to prove opposite angles are equal to 180, exterior angle equal to the opposite interior angle, and angles in the same segment. If you can prove that one of these theorems is true for that quad, then it is a cyclic quad. All right, so here it's obvious that angle B is equal to angle P, and this is because of all the work we did earlier when we were proving all these angles are equal to X. B was X, P was X, and therefore they are equal to each other. And if you have angle B equal to angle P, can you see they are the ends of the bow tie, um, which is angles in the same segment, that's the theorem. So I'll say A, B, P, R is a cyclic quad. My reason would be converse angles in the same segment. All right. So that's how you prove cyclic quads. Just make sure you use one of the theorems of a cyclic quad. Find them. Oh, you're not going to use them, but rather you're going to look for them, see if it's true for that quad. If it is true, then you can call that a cyclic quad. Right. And your reason is converse, whatever theorem you made use of. Now moving on to the third example. Let's study the sketch first. ED is the diameter to the circle. AC is a tangent to the circle. AM is perpendicular to DE. Right, let's see what's the first question. Prove FBDM is a cyclic quad. And then also prove angle B3 is equal to angle F1. Okay, so again, for this first question, we are proving a cyclic quad. And remember, it's those three theorems. Opposite angles equal to 180, exterior angle of a cyclic quad um, equal to opposite interior angle, and then the bow tie theorem, which we used for the previous one. Now, looking at FBDM, we already know that angle M1 is 90 degrees. We also know angle M2 is 90 degrees. This is because they gave us that AM is perpendicular to DE. That was given. Okay, so if I can just prove that B2 is also 90 degrees, I could either state that it's a cyclic quad because we have opposite angles equal to 180, or that exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the opposite interior angle, with M2 being equal to angle B. Now first let's prove angle B2 is 90 degrees. All right, I'll say B2 is 90 degrees because we have a diameter, DE, and diameters subtend 90 degree angles. Um, the theorem for this is angle in a semicircle. Okay, that's the reason you would write down. Okay, now since B2 is 90 degrees, I'm going to say therefore B2 plus B1 equals uh, 180 degrees, M1 is 90, the perpendicular part, and B2 is 90, we just stated that, and therefore FBDM is a cyclic quad, converse, opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Okay, moving on to the second question, we have to prove that angle B3 is equal to angle F1. Notice angle B3 is the angle between a tangent and a chord. Now, subtended from that chord is angle D2. And B3 is therefore equal to D2, but D2 is also equal to F1. And my reason for this is exterior angle of a cyclic quad equal to opposite interior angle. Remember, we said FBDM is a cyclic quad, so I can now make use of cyclic quad theorems for that quad over there. Okay, so D2 is equal to um, F1. You can even draw a circle around FBDM just so you can emphasize the fact that it is now a cyclic quad. Okay, even though it wasn't in the beginning, we proved it to be, so now we can use that. All right, and that is it for the second question. Now, moving on to our last and final example, I do now challenge you to all pause the video here and really attempt this one on your own. Maybe even take out a piece of paper, redraw the sketch, or if you can answer just on the screen, that would be awesome as well. Um, but really challenge yourself with this one. Okay, here we have BE and CD as diameters of the circle. M is the center of the circle. AE is perpendicular to CD. And angle C is equal to X. 
Here we now have three questions. First, we're going to prove that AF is equal to FE. Then we're going to prove, uh, or rather determine, angle M1 in terms of X. Um, and lastly, prove that AD is a tangent to the circle passing through ACF. All right. Now for our first question, we're going to prove AF equal to FE. Again, I'm going to make use of my first theorem here. M is the center of the circle, and a line drawn from the center of a circle perpendicular to a chord would bisect that chord, and therefore AF would be equal to FE. And that's it. You just give that reason. Um, then, question number two, determine angle M1 in terms of X. First, I'll have to find angle A1 in terms of X. And notice the right angle triangle you have there. Angle F is 90 degrees. In fact, all the angles around F is 90 degrees because those lines are perpendicular. Then angle C is uh, X and angle A1 would be 90 minus X. Remember, we spoke about this with that second example we did. Um, and if you have an angle of 90 degrees and angle of X, the third one would always be 90 minus X sum of angles in a triangle. Okay, now to find angle M1 in terms of X, we're going to use that angle A1. M is the angle at the center, and A1 is the angle at the circumference, subtended by the arc CE. So therefore, M1 would be twice the size of angle A1. So if A1 is 90 minus X, then M1 will be 180 minus 2X. Okay, it's twice the size of the angle at the circumference. Okay, now lastly, we have to prove that AD is a tangent to the circle passing through ACF. AD is a tangent passing through ACF. Okay, you can even draw a circle now around AC and F. Then AD being the tangent to that circle, there's this theorem that says, an angle formed between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by the chord. So I first need to show that angle A2 is equal to angle C, and then I can say, therefore, AD is a tangent. If I can't show that A2 is equal to C, then therefore AD is not a tangent, or at least we can't prove it to be one. So let me first show you that A2 is equal to X. Now, we said that angle M1 is 180 minus 2X, Therefore, the angle next to that will be 2x, because those angles on a straight line must add up to 180. Now, angle EMD, which I said was not 2x, if we half that angle, remember that's angle at the center, if we half that angle, it would be equal to the angle at circumference. So half of 2x is just x. So angle A2 is x, angle at the circumference. Okay, and now you've proven that A2 is equal to angle C, so you can go ahead and say that AD is a tangent to circle ACF due to the reason converse tangent chord theorem. Again, I want to emphasize I'm using the word converse because we are reversing the theorem. Right? We didn't know at first that it was a tangent, but after proving A2 is equal to angle C, we now can conclude that it is a tangent because of that tangent chord theorem. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and also be sure to share this with your friends if you found it helpful. Bye.